So as it turns out, you can throw every cooling component known to man at a Harley and it will still overheat. Yep, I learned that the hard way on this trip I just got back from. The twin cooled bikes use coolant and they require maintenance. Something you would think I would know about. I do know now. So today we're going to be talking about bleeding and replacing the coolant on all twin cooled Harley Davidson models. And we're talking about that because Kevin had a mishap on the million dollar highway. <laughs> yeah. And he learned the hard way that it's very important to keep an optimal coolant level on your Harley. That's embarrassing. I wasn't gonna say anything. But. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna go through how to bleed your system and how to replace the coolant. Now I have close to 100,000 miles on twin cool bikes. And up until this last month, I've never done anything to the coolant system. It just worked. And so like on my 14, I read the manual. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to replace the coolant every 30,000 miles. Well, so I had over 60,000 miles on that bike and I never touched the coolant, let alone replaced it. I never had to do anything. This bike with very low miles, I did have um, a problem on the million dollar highway and it had nothing to do with the highway. That just happened to be where <laughs> it was discovered. So um, we're gonna show how to bleed the system and how to uh, replace the coolant. And why is this important? Well, if I call my 14, where I went over 60,000 miles and never touched it, never had a problem, it wasn't important. But I overheated. I have all of our cooling stuff on here, but I overheated because the simple reason is the coolant system is pressurized. If it gets any air in it, then you get bubbles in it and that causes overheating. And that's what happened to me on this last trip. And it was all new territory for me. I've learned a lot, so that's why we're doing this. It is, the reason I bring that up, it is a reason that a bike can run too hot. You just had a call this morning from a guy who's going, man, my bike's 350 degrees. It could very well be that he's experiencing the same thing that I did, and he's got an air bubble in his pressurized cooling system, and it's making it overheat. So let's get into it and show how to bleed the system and how to replace the coolant. Let's get to it. The first step is on a two-wheel bike, you just put it over on the jiffy stand. Do not have it straight up. On the trike, you have to get the uh, rear right tire six inches off the ground and the front tire six inches off the ground. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Number one, coolant should be changed every 30,000 miles. We're gonna change the coolant today even though I don't need to so you guys can see how to do it on the video. Number two, the coolant level should not be below the line. Number three, the system after you fill it with coolant needs to be bled. So let's look at it. This is what Harley calls the coolant overflow tank. It's connected to the top of the radiator, the radiator has a regular radiator cap that is set to open at somewhere between 18 and 21 pounds. And you just pull it out like this to access it. What we're going to do now first is we are going to show real quick how to bleed the system. And the first thing that you do 
When you go to bleed the system, you just pull the radiator cap out so you can access it. You have to twist it. And never do this when the engine is hot, just like you don't do it on a car when the engine is hot. It can spew steam and hot coolant everywhere. There we go. Okay. So, if you can get that camera up here and show the coolant on the top of that cap. You can see the coolant is right at the top. So this system probably doesn't need to be bled, but we're gonna show how to bleed it anyway because it's really simple to bleed. You turn your key on and you twist your throttle to at least 50% and hold it for three seconds. Now go ahead and look here. See that coolant level has gone lower, but there's no bubbles. So when you stop seeing bubbles, it's black. So we're going to do this again after we drain all the fluid, all the coolant out and we refill it with coolant. And when we go to bleed it, you will see bubbles coming up and you have to just let it run until the bubbles are done. And if the coolant disappears, in other words, it goes so far down that you can't see it, then you need to fill it up again. So that's the coolant, or that's the bleeding. We're going to do it again in a little while and you will see how it works. We're going to go ahead and leave this cap off because if we put it back on, we're just going to have to take it off again when we drain the coolant. So we're going to leave that off. We're also going to open this because that's part of what you need to do when you go to drain the existing coolant. So this is, this is the cover to the water pump on the twin-cooled system. This is normally where Harley puts the oil cooler on touring models, but there is no oil cooler that comes from the factory on touring models. Instead, it's a water pump, and it's held in by two buttons I'm going to show you on the bottom. These two buttons go into rubber grommets down here, and then these two clips go right on here. One word of advice is whenever you have your bike in for service or whenever you've taken this out, when you hook this back on and you go to push those into the rubber grommets, make sure that they're pushed all the way into the rubber grommets and seated well, because many, many times the Harley Techs don't seat those in the rubber grommets well. In 20, 50, 100 miles down the road, you lose the cover, and then you go, oh, I got no cover, and you go to a Harley dealership to get the cover replaced because it was never put on properly, and they don't have any of these covers. They only have the chrome ones, and they're going to charge you like 100 bucks or more for them. So pull that cover off, and then you have three hoses one right here one right here and one right here and it's very important look in your manual it's very important to be careful this hose right here is on a plastic nipple and you need to be very gentle with it because it's prone to breaking and then they you'll see when we get them off how i'm going to show you what to be careful of when you put them back on so these are spring clamps, so I'm just going to get some channel locks when you're doing these hoses, especially this one over here that's on the plastic nipple. You do not want to break them or cut the hose and end up having a much bigger project than you need to have. So I'm going to gently, gently pull this hose off of this nipple. And we have both caps open up top, so it's making it easy for this to come out. And 
and this coolant has less than a thousand miles on it because I already did this about a thousand miles ago. So now we're going to come over and do the other two hoses. Last time I did this, I was in a dirt parking lot in Silverton, right off the Million Dollar Highway. And I'm going to be careful with this too, but this is a metal nipple, so it's not... And this top one is also a metal nipple. And, oh, and that's it, less than one quart of coolant. So we're just gonna let this sit For a minute, let everything drain out of it, and then hook the hoses back up. So a question that um, some people will have, and a question I had when I was in the middle of nowhere and needed to add some coolant to my bike, was what kind of coolant to use? And I went online, Harley does not spec out their coolant well, but uh, almost everybody online agrees that the uh, Peak coolant, Peak is the brand, Peak coolant that is in either the yellow or orange container, I don't remember which, is the one that is compatible with the Harley coolant. I would recommend using the Harley coolant. They sell them in these little containers right here. And it takes about one and a half of these. And then they sell them in this gallon container right here. Harley Davidson Extended Life Antifreeze and Coolant. So retail package, I guess, big package. So um, I don't know what you can mix with this and what you can't. I would recommend just getting this if you can. I ended up getting this at the Harley Davidson store in Silverton after I got the peak and tried using it. It didn't gum up or anything like some will do when you mix them. But um, when I had the opportunity to buy some of the Harley Davidson coolant, I did. Is it a little more expensive? Yes. Are you sure to be getting the right thing and not have any issues with your warranty? Yes. So. I would recommend using the Harley stuff just for that reason alone. So what we're doing right now, we've pulled the hoses, we're letting them, letting everything drain out because you're supposed to do that every 30,000 miles. We're going to put the hoses back on, then we're going to fill it up and we're going to bleed the system. Each one of these nipples has a little ridge right there. You want to make sure when you put the clamp back on, it's not on that ridge. It's between this ridge and that ridge. And this one, you see it has a ridge here and a ridge there. You always want to make sure that the clamp is between the two ridges, not sitting on top of either one of those ridges. So we're going to put this back on. And then Move this clamp up to between those two ridges, right there. That one's done. And get that clamp back between the two ridges on the nipple. Okay, so that's done. And we can go ahead and put this back on simply by putting this over both 
of these, and then I'm going to get below and make sure both of those posts go into the rubber grommet so that we don't lose this cover down the road. There we go. So that is done. Like Dwayne said at the beginning of the video, uh, you can do everything right to keep your twin cooled bike cool, but if the coolant system has a problem, none of that's going to be of any good. You can still overheat. It's very easy for the Hurley engine to overheat if it gets a pocket of air in the cooling track that goes around each exhaust valve. So how can there be a pocket of air in there? If your coolant level gets too low and instead of equalizing with coolant, it equalizes with air and air gets in there, you can get a pocket of air trapped in there and the engine will overheat. The other is if even if you've done a service and replaced your coolant at 30,000 miles, you did it or someone at the Harley dealership did it, it this cap is a two-stage cap. If it's not put on correctly all the way, it will slowly leak coolant out. And there's a vent tube that comes all the way down here, and it can leak so slowly that you're not even really aware of it, and then your coolant drops too low, and you get an air pocket. I believe that's what happened to mine, is that the cap was never on correctly, because I never had an obvious leak, and there's no reason for my coolant to have dropped as low as it did, other than, and they're very specific in the manual, it's a two-stage cap, and the cap has to be on all the way. I don't think the cap was on all the way from the factory, but it's impossible to know for sure. But you want to check this, you want to keep this coolant up at the cold level mark, and you want to change the coolant every 30,000 miles, or you're going to have problems. To dispel a couple of myths, number one, if the water pump goes out, a lot of people say a water pump goes out, then it'll just act like an air-cooled engine. That is true as long as when the water pump goes out, it doesn't get any pocket of air going into the engine. If your water pump breaks and it leaks coolant out and lets air get into the system, you get a pocket of air, that engine's going to get too hot. So that's one myth possibly dispelled. It just depends on how the water pump fails. You do not want a pocket of air in there. It will get too hot. The second myth is a lot of dealerships will tell you you cannot replace the coolant yourself. Right in the Harley manual it shows the power fill and bleed method which requires a tool that the Harley dealerships have. And then it shows the manual fill and bleed. We're going to do the manual fill and bleed today because we don't have that tool. Either one can be used to change the coolant. So we're going to do the manual fill and bleed now. So we're going to go ahead and fill up the coolant. It takes less than a quart of coolant, but it is much easier with two people. One to hold the funnel, the other one to pour it in. A lot of people put the coolant in a squeeze bottle and just squeeze it in. I don't have a squeeze bottle to put it in, so we're just going to use this funnel. So Dwayne, if you can hold that funnel, and I'm going to pour the coolant in. So it takes less than a quart, it takes way more than what we put in there, but it's taking time for the coolant right now to replace the air in the system, 
What I'm going to do is do a bleed. Turn the ignition on, put the throttle at over 50% for three seconds. And what that's doing is it's the pump is pumping the coolant through the system and getting the air out of the system. So it'll be easier to continue filling it. Okay, and let's do the bleed. Turn the ignition on, put the throttle. Look at that. It just disappeared. So we need to put more in there. It's been a few minutes. It's still at the same level. We're gonna go ahead and do the bleed. Turn the ignition on, put the throttle at 50% or bigger, more for three seconds. And yeah, we see a little few bubbles coming out. So we're going to put just a tad more in there. We just don't want any air in the system at all. That's what can cause a problem. You see there's still a few more bubbles coming right there. Okay, now when you look in your manual, you'll see that this is a two-stage cap. It has to go on, push down on here, and go all the way through to over here. And it is not easy to get it on right. I think that's what was wrong with it from the factory, is they never put it on all the way to the second stage. There we go. And then this tucks back up in here, behind here, there we go. Close this off, and again, this has three ridges on it. You want to get all three of them in there so that this is sealed off good too. There we go. Okay. You can use whatever your favorite cleaner is to clean stuff up. Anywhere where this stuff might have fallen. Put the lid back on here. Oh, and again, you see that I'm above the line. I'm going to wait till I get it back level and then I'll suck out whatever I need to that is to get it down to the line. But again, if it's above the line, that's not going to cause the issue. Being below the line is where you can end up with air in your system and a problem. So that was uh, a hard lesson to learn, but now you know how important it is to keep an eye on your coolant level. Absolutely. And that I didn't have to for so many miles made me lax because I'll make an admission right now. Before we left on that trip, I pulled this cover and I looked and I saw the coolant was low, but I had never ever had a problem. So I go, okay, so it's low. <laughs> What's the big deal? Good enough. <laughs> but it was a big deal. So what we went over today was two things, complete replacement, which includes a bleed. And sometimes you may want to do a bleed even if you're not doing a complete replacement. And you don't want to do this on the side of the road. No. It's not ideal. But it's a, if you have to, you can. It is doable. <laughs> Living proof. <laughs> it is doable. Yeah, it is doable. And we went on to ride another, you know, eight, nine hundred miles in mountains, up mountain passes, over mountain passes after that. And uh, so it is possible, but of course it is much nicer to do it 
in the not air. on the side of the road in the dirt. Yeah, in the air conditioning. Yeah. So if you like this video and it helped you out in any way, hit that notification bell so you'll be updated when our next video comes out and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. And it's free, doesn't cost you anything to do. Also share this with your friends. I went years and years without thinking anything about the cooling system and then it bit me in the butt. Share it with anybody you know who has a twin cooled bike because probability is they're not keeping up with it just like I wasn't. So share it with your friends. Y'all ride safe out there.